So your doctor has told you that your cholesterol is too high and you want to try to lower your cholesterol naturally. What can you do? In this video, let's talk about 11 different ways that you might use to help lower your cholesterol levels. And we're going to begin our discussion by talking about weight loss. If you need to lose weight, there is ample research that this can help. In this paper, you're looking at 40 overweight kids, both boys and girls, were put on a 10-week weight loss program, and the results showed that weight loss promoted a significant reductions in oxidized bad cholesterol. What's that you're asking? Well, oxidized LDL, these particles tend to be smaller and much more atherogenic, according to some research, and atherogenic is the fancy smarty pants wave of saying artery clogging. Here's another paper which reviewed the outcomes of 73 other clinical trials revealing that for every 2.2 pounds or one kilogram of weight loss was associated with reductions in LDL and triglycerides, leading these authors to conclude that weight loss in adults is associated with significant improvements in blood cholesterol levels. Next up is something that some people probably don't want to hear me say, but it is true, exercise. So in this paper, a 12-week strength training program was shown to significantly lower total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol levels in overweight postmenopausal women. And just to be equal here, here is another paper involving overweight men, which also showed exercise training lowers LDL bad cholesterol levels, as well as blood pressure, body weight, and percent body fat. Next up on our list is eat more nuts. Here's a paper where 100 overweight people were put on a diet or that same diet that also included some walnuts. Oh, and in case you're wondering how much walnuts they were eating in this paper, it wasn't a lot. It only came to between one and one and a half ounces each day. Now, after six months, both groups lost weight. They both lost about nine pounds or four kilograms, which makes sense since they were all dieting. But only the people who were eating the walnuts showed about a 10 point reduction in their LDL levels. Now, let's follow that up with this next paper where 60 people with pre diabetes diabetes are given two ounces of pistachios or a low calorie diet each day for six months. Here the results show that pistachios lowered not only LDL cholesterol, but also fasting blood sugar, oxidative stress, and inflammation as well. And there's also good news for almond lovers as well. You're looking at a paper where 107 healthy younger and older people who consume just two ounces of dry roasted non-salted almonds each day for six weeks lowered their LDL cholesterol more than those who did not eat almonds. Next up is aged garlic extract. And if you're not familiar with this, aged garlic extract is an extract of garlic whose health effects have been studied for decades for a variety of topics, including cholesterol levels. In this paper, 51 overweight adults were given 3.6 grams of aged garlic extract each day for six weeks compared to placebo takers. Those who took aged garlic extract supplements had significant reductions in bad cholesterol and there were reductions in inflammation markers as well, such as interleukin-6 and TNF-alpha. Another thing that may be worth taking a look at is psyllium. Now, psyllium is a soluble fiber and it happens also to be the fiber in Metamucil, which you may even have in your house right now. In this paper, 50 people with elevated cholesterol levels were instructed to consume 3.5 grams of psyllium three times a day with food like yogurt or take it with water, 100 milliliters or 3.5 ounces of water. And three weeks later, those people had significantly lower total cholesterol and bad cholesterol levels. Now, I will point out in this paper that by the end of the investigation, these people still would have been considered to have high cholesterol levels. But remember, this study only lasted three weeks. So it may take longer than three weeks for psyllium to lead to significant reductions in LDL and total cholesterol. Here's a review of eight previous research studies where it was concluded that psyllium fiber could reduce total cholesterol by about 4% and bad LDL levels by about 7%. And while we're on the topic of fiber, there's also research on another fiber called glucomannan, which also goes by the name of konjac root extract. In this review of the research, it was concluded that glucomannan fiber could potentially lower total cholesterol levels by about 10% and LDL cholesterol by about 7%. And incidentally, I will link to my glucomannan review below this one so you can learn more about that. 
That brings us to beta-glucan, which is also a type of soluble fiber found in many foods, most notably barley and oatmeal. Here's a review of beta-glucan from oatmeal reporting that at dosages as low as just three grams a day, beta-glucan was able to lower cholesterol and LDL levels by between five and 10% respectively. And by the way, this occurred in people with normal cholesterol as well as elevated cholesterol levels. So good news if you like oatmeal. Next up is green tea, which has been the subject of more clinical trials than you can shake a stick at, including cholesterol. In this paper, which reviewed the results of 21 previous green tea clinical trials, it was concluded that drinking green tea might be expected to lower cholesterol by about three points and lower LDL cholesterol by about five points. So rather modest effects, however, green tea, if you do like it, may be something to consider as part of your overall cholesterol reducing plan. Next up are plant sterols, which sterols kind of look like steroids. However, they don't build muscle and they don't raise testosterone levels. For example, you probably heard of beta cytosterol, which is one of the most popular plant sterols known today. It's found in a variety of different foods, ranging from wheat germ and avocados to a variety of different fruits and vegetables as well, and even nuts and seeds. Various clinical trials have revealed that adding plant sterols to the diet appears to have a cholesterol lowering effect, such as this paper you're looking at here, where the addition of plant sterols to the diet lowered LDL cholesterol by about 9% after just six weeks. And something else that many people may not be aware of, and that is that plant sterols also appear to enhance the effects of some cholesterol lowering statin medications. And that brings us to a supplement that I really couldn't do this video on without discussing it, and that is red yeast rice. Red yeast rice is probably one of the things I believe that people think of first when they think of natural ways to lower their cholesterol. And that's because there are many clinical trials showing that red yeast rice appears to work. For example, here's a review of several different clinical trials which found that red yeast rice lowers total cholesterol, bad LDL cholesterol levels, and triglyceride levels as well. Now, having said that, there is something you need to know about red yeast rice. How does it work? Well, red yeast rice works because it contains a natural statin compound called lobostatin as well as other natural statin compounds. This means red yeast rice is kind of a natural statin drug. This also means that red yeast rice has the potential to cause some of the same side effects as statin medications. This includes muscle pains and yes, rhabdomyolysis. And if you're not familiar with rhabdomyolysis, also called rhabdo, see my videos below or check out my book for even more information. And that brings us to another dietary supplement which has become exceedingly popular around the world and that is berberine. Berberine is found in in different plants, most notably things like golden seal and barberry. And berberine has the unique distinction of having research that it appears to lower not only cholesterol, but also blood sugar too. But for today, let's just look at the cholesterol proof. In this paper, 1,000 milligrams of berberine taken daily lowered cholesterol, LDL levels, and triglycerides after just three months. And in this review, it was reported that berberine seemed to work as well as some statin medications. And for more insights, I will link to my videos on berberine below so you can learn more about that. And that brings us to bergamot, which is a supplement that I don't think a lot of people are aware of yet. Bergamot is an extract of the bergamot orange, and it's also found in small amounts in Earl Grey tea. Here is a review of five previously conducted clinical trials on bergamot, where it was demonstrated to lower total cholesterol, LDL levels, and triglycerides too. And one more interesting thing about bergamot is that there's at least one clinical trial that appears to show that it enhances the cholesterol lowering effects of resuvastatin, which is a popular statin medication. Now let's switch gears a bit and talk about one particular popular supplement that I don't think works, and you may be taking it right now, and that is fish oil. Yeah, I'm talking about fish oil that you're probably taking for triglyceride levels, because there is research that fish oil supplements appear to lower triglyceride. Actually, Big Pharma has actually turned fish oil into a drug to do just that. However, when it comes to lowering cholesterol and bad cholesterol levels, I'm just not convinced that it does this. 
Yes, if you look deep enough, you will find some research that shows that fish oil can lower LDL levels, but I'm not convinced of those studies because sometimes they lower the saturated fat in addition to giving people fish oil. So is it really the fish oil supplement or lowering the saturated fat that was responsible for the effect? And then ironically, there is also research that appears to show that fish oil can raise bad cholesterol levels. And if you couple that with some research that appears to show that fish oil in high doses may increase the risk of atrial fibrillation, it's just not a supplement that I would suggest taking as your primary supplement to lower your cholesterol levels. Okay, so this video contained an awful lot of information. So to get you started and give you a better idea of what to look for in terms of supplements and lifestyle interventions, here is a summary of the amounts of the different cholesterol lowering supplements and lifestyle interventions that has been used in clinical trials. Remember, this is just a summary and you should not take these dosages and amounts as gospel because everybody is different. And while we're on the topic of diversity, one pro tip I would say is start with less than is recommended, whether less than what you see on this table here or what is recommended by a company. In other words, give your body time to adjust adjust to this new thing that you're going to incorporate into your lifestyle. You're not only giving your body time to adapt to this new thing, but if side effects were to occur by taking less, you're minimizing those side effects. Another thing to remember is that if you do take medications, there could be interactions between the supplements I've mentioned here and the medications you're taking. So when in doubt, absolutely speak to your doctor and pharmacist for greater insights. And if you're still with me, congratulations. If you are wondering what I would suggest you start off with, well, I am gonna start off with the basics, and that is losing some weight if necessary and getting more physically active. The research shows that these things will not only lower cholesterol levels, but will provide a multitude of other benefits as well. So there you go. There's 11 different things that you might use to help lower your cholesterol. Absolutely leave a comment below and let me know what you used and how effective it was at lowering your cholesterol.